Namaste everyone. Today we will deal with the ray optics. Uh, what is optics? Optics is a branch of physics which deals with the, uh, the properties of light, nature of light, different phenomena associated with light. Light is a very fascinating uh, thing that we see in our daily life. As soon as you are born, what is the first thing that you do? You will cry and as soon as you open your eyes, you will see the light entering into your eyes. Light is the first thing, external thing that will interact with your body. Light enters into your eyes, you open the eyes and allow the light to pass through. Light falls on the retina and the first image is recorded in the brain. As if you purchase a mobile and get the first photograph and you get excited to see that photograph. Similarly, the baby records the first photograph using the first light. So light is the one which we interact with which, with which we interact in the beginning. So it is very fascinating. We have so many things in this world. We have solids, liquids, objects, wood, tree, everything. Everything occupies space and it has a mass. What about light? Light has no mass. Does light travel? Yes, it travels with enormous high speed. Suppose you make a 100 meter competition between different objects in this universe and light takes the first place because it has a very tremendous high speed. So light is a, a very, very interesting thing and uh, like we say that uh, in the lower classes you study and say what is light? Immediately your answer is light is a form of energy. So yes, it is a form of energy definitely. But shall we restrict our studies only that much? No. Light has many, many things. And you, till now, scientists have tried to study about light, tried to understand light in many ways. Some say that light is a stream of particles. Some say that light is a packet of energy. And some say that light is a wave. And what are all the phenomena that we get in our day-to-day -day life, like reflection of light, refraction of light, photoelectric effect, so many things. We try to explain it using different ways of understanding light. And some say it is having wave nature, some say that it is a particle nature, it has a quantum, uh, it has a quantum of energy, and some say that it is a mixture, and they say that it has dual nature, sometimes it behaves like this and like that. So, light has become a very fascinating thing for all the people in this universe, and uh, uh, suppose you take a, a pipe with water and if you put the pipe uh, uh, water in the pipe like this and it will be attracted by the gravity and the water in the pipe will not move straight like this, it will go down. Suppose you take a torch light and put the torch light like this, the torch light moves straight. That means light is not affected by gravity. Light travels with such a high speed that gravity finds no time to attract it. By that time light would have escaped away. So light travels with enormous high speed, it is not affected by gravity, we say that it has no mass at all. And uh, so the study of light is very important in this universe, without light nothing can survive in this universe. Light is a major requirement for all the living beings and that light is studied under different aspects. One is nature of light, its phenomena and everything. And another is, what are the characteristics of light? So we differentiate it into different parts and one part is ray optics. Why it is called ray optics? What is the meaning of ray? Ray is an, uh, 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 some conventional way of representing a light in a paper. So we represent a light like this. It will be represented by a straight line with an arrow. Usually we represent a light like this. Sir, if a light is represented by a straight line with an arrow, what well, the, I, we have some doubts how long it should be and how thin it should be now suppose you have many many rays clubbed together suppose you have a torch light whether it's a ray sir no it is a collection of rays light coming from a torch will contain collection of rays like this and that is called a beam beam of light collection of rays is called a beam okay then what is a ray ray is a thin beam how much thin as thin as possible, there is no limit for it. As much you can take, that is, uh, that is enough. So take a thin ray of light like this. 
Now, whether this is very thin, if you ask a student, whether this is a thin ray of light? Yes, it is a thin ray of light and you can call it as a ray. And this is not a collection of some other rays. This is not made up of some other rays, so we call it as a ray. But if you ask an ant, very small ant, ant will come here and it will say, sir, this is very thick and it is a beam of light. For an ant, this is a thicker one, but for us, this is enough. So, a straight line path of the light is represented by an arrow like this and a straight line and we call it as a ray. Ray is the path of a light which is represented in a uh, diagram. So from here onwards we use uh, this uh, notation and we know that in a medium where optical density is the same throughout, the optical density and uh, we will come across a word called refractive index doesn't change with the distance. If it is isotropic everywhere, light travels in straight line. So this is a, a common property that you study in your lower classes. That is called rectilinear propagation of light. Light always travels in a straight line. And since it travels in a straight line, we could represent a ray by a straight line. And of course, it changes the direction when it moves from one place to another, one medium to another. And all these things are uh, OK. But in an optical medium, in a uniform optical medium, isotropic medium, it travels in straight line and that rectilinear propagation of light helps us and helps us to a large extent to study light because we have a separate branch called geometry, mathematics. You can apply all the things that you get in geometry, all the theorems and proofs and everything. You can apply it here for the light since light travels in straight line. And uh, in the beginning I told that study of different properties of light is very useful nowadays. Okay. Already you have seen many properties of light, like reflection. What do you mean by reflection? When light falls on certain material, a part of it bounces back to the same medium. That is called reflection. Of course, reflection can be seen in many uh, aspects. Suppose you throw a ball like this, it gets reflected. If you drop a ball vertically downwards, it gets reflected. So reflection can be seen in many ways. Light also gets reflected from any surface. Amount of reflection may be different. When you put a light on a mirror, the amount of light reflected will be more compared to when a light is put on a wall. If you put a light on a wall, the wall is not so polished, so its a reflected light will not be much more. More amount of light may be scattered, but there is reflection. Now, when we study all these things one by one, first, the simplest one is reflection. Reflection of light. And you study this property in your lower classes itself. Light rebounds back when it falls on certain medium. A portion of light, say. And that is called reflection. And when it undergoes reflection, it follows some properties. It follows, it always follows some properties and it doesn't uh, uh, disobey those properties at all. That is always true. And what are those properties? One is when a ray of light Say this is a reflecting medium, say surface of glass or surface of water or a mirror, say. I will represent the mirror like this and this is the uh, side where it is uh, painted, light can't enter into that. This is the side, upper side is the side from where it can reflect the light. Okay, now take a ray of light, a very thin beam of light, say one, uh, uh, a laser beam, you put a laser beam here. It, like, as soon as the light falls on it, like a ball, it gets reflected. And remember, this reflection is immediate process because we know that light travels with enormous high speed. So light gets reflected back to the same medium. And when it gets reflected like this, so arrow mark shows that it's going towards the medium and rebounding back to the other side. We, using geometry, for our convenience, we, in order to study the light property, we define some things here. Of course, light doesn't know that it has so many things here. We, for our understanding purpose, we imagine a perpendicular line here, like this. And this is called normal. Since uh, it is not found in this uh, uh, reflection process, we put it in a dotted line. This is not in reality. We don't see a normal line on any surface. For our convenience, we draw a normal. What type of normal? What type of perpendicular? Perpendicular should be drawn to the surface, to the surface which reflects light. Where you have to draw it? At the point where the light is made to fall. 
don't draw a perpendicular here don't draw a perpendicular to the ray of light draw a perpendicular to the surface of light surface of uh, uh, su surface where the light falls at the point where the light falls so a normal drawn to the reflecting surface now define some angles we, uh, in order to see how does light reflect and what uh, usual things it will follow i will define this angle this is called angle of incidence a very easy definition every time you should be along with the definition nothing will confuse you first one angle of incidence what do you mean by angle of incidence angle between incident ray and this normal line normal is not a ray it is a line angle between incident ray and normal is called angle of incidence okay you can measure another angle here angle of reflection angle between reflected ray and the normal is called angle of reflection so these are angles are measured with respect to the normal and these angles are measured for our convenience and uh, if you make the ray of light to fall at different angles suppose uh, in order to show the difference i will use a different chalk if a ray of light is made to fall like this then it gets reflected like this now this is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of reflection here always it is found that angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection this is the first law first law of reflection so it was measured in different occasions on different media suppose you take a laser beam make it to fall on uh, different media then it gets reflected so if you measure the angles finally you will come to know that always angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection if you make the ray of light to fall at 30 degree it will bounce back at 30 degree with respect to normal if you make it fall at 60 degree it will bounce back at 60 degree with respect to normal so angle of incidence is always equal to angle of reflection wherever that light ray gets reflected whether it is reflected from a wall where from a perfect mirror from a cylindrical shaped uh, um, uh, a vessel or a dish steel vessel anywhere it follows this uh, uh, reflection rule and second law you might be knowing all these laws but we will have we will refresh everything second law says the incident ray here reflected ray i will follow the white one incident ray reflected ray, ray and the normal all the three lines lie in the same plane what do you mean by incident ray reflected ray and the normal lie in the same plane very simple you can't expect the ray of light falling on a mirror like this and coming out like this it is impossible and it becomes a different plane it cannot be so a ray of light falling along the board and after reflection it should fall or it should reflect along the board and this normal should be on the board all the three lines are in this plane in the plane of the board so incident ray reflected ray and the normal all the three lie in the same plane that is the second law and uh, i don't uh, write it you will get all these things in some other book huh? i don't waste time in writing all those things so incident ray reflected ray and the normal line normal is not a ray all the three lie in the same plane so sir if i put a ray of light like this i i will take a ray be uh, this uh, a laser beam and i will put it like this of course it will pass on the other side of course you can see this uh, um uh, reflection here i can show it using a small uh, uh, arrangement and here is a mirror attached to a paper and uh, i will fix it here and i can take a laser beam and make it to fall on this right see here the ray of light when it falls at some angle it gets reflected back in the same angle since it is a laser beam i can't show it continuously here but to some extent i can show you the reflection right and if i change the angle of incidence here can you see the angle of reflection something different i'll try this yes at the point of incidence since it is laser it doesn't get switched on continuously to some extent i can show the reflection here yes so and uh, yes it gets reflected i can't show the path of the laser so easily so now we can see it to some extent right 
and uh, let me try once again. Yes. So to some extent I can show you. So here also it gets reflected. Path cannot be shown so neatly. Yeah, yes, little bit of reflection you can see. Now, if you put a ray of light normal like this, what happens? Can you see any reflection? If I put a laser beam like this normally, okay, yes. So it gets reflected back in the same path but in the opposite direction. Wait, 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 wait for a while. I can put it like this. Yes. If a ray of light is incident normally like this, it reflects back in the same path but in the opposite direction. So that is also one of the incidents. Remember, we always uh, uh, have a confusion here. Uh, there is a chance of going wrong. Angles are always measured with respect to normal. It is not with respect to the surface. We draw a normal to the surface and measure the angles. Angle between incident ray and the normal. Angle between reflected ray and normal. Suppose you choose a ray of light like this. This is the surface which reflects the light. And if your ray of light is incident along the normal itself. We say that it is normal incidence. But angle of incidence is not 90 degrees. Normal incidence in the sense, it is incident normally on the surface, but it doesn't mean that angle of incidence is 90. Angle of incidence is zero because the ray is along the normal itself. Angle between the normal and the incident ray is zero. The right light reflects back like this. What is angle of reflection? That is zero. So that is also followed here. Angle of incidence when it is zero, that means when the ray of light is incident normally on the uh, surface it gets rebounded back in the same path but in the opposite direction so angle of reflection is zero now so this is what we see in our uh, daily life we spend a lot of time in front of a plane mirror we stand for hours and hours you know who especially stand in front of the plane mirror for hours and hours we look into our image and we have seen that image so many times in our life what are the characteristics of the image formed in a plane mirror in a plane mirror, always we see an image at the same distance as the object. Suppose you stand in front of a plane mirror by holding a one meter scale, then you, your image will also be holding a one meter scale and uh, looking towards you. So object distance and image distance from the mirror are same. And what else? Height of the object and height of the image are same. So same sized image is formed inside the plane mirror. And uh, image is formed at the same distance as the object from the mirror. So object distance equal to image distance and size of the image will be same. And image is virtual because you see it inside the mirror and uh, uh, if you draw a ray diagram to show the image formation in a plane mirror, you will find that rays do not actually uh, come from that point. You feel as if the rays are coming from a point inside the mirror. So it is virtual, erect, erect in the sense if your head is above, legs are below image will also be in the same condition erect same sized virtual and image formed at the same distance as the object and one more thing you will observe in the image formed in a plane mirror it is laterally reversed what do you mean by lateral reverse your left side in the image will be on the right side and your right hand in the image will be on the left side so it is laterally reversed uh, that is because the ray get reflected and goes to the other side and all and you can draw the ray diagrams and you can see that and that lateral reverse you can see it here very clearly so this is a plane mirror I have a plane mirror here and uh, this is a clock you see the time time in the clock uh, time in the clock is now about almost uh, four hours five minutes right four hours five minutes of course I didn't purposefully I didn't uh, uh, write the numbers here but you can identify the um, time almost four hours five minutes it has crossed now what about the time in the uh, clock time in the clock is uh, how much 
it is uh, time in the clock is somewhat like I will look into that it is uh, uh, seven o'clock is it not seven o'clock and uh, almost 55 minutes is it I will, I will try it to uh, show you in the mirror can you see the image right you can see the image in the mirror right so what is the time in the mirror image now so it is laterally reversed so what happens here is what happens here is uh, the this hand our hand will come here it is uh, seven o'clock here and this will come here 55 right 755 it will show almost 755 so it is laterally reversed you can do this experiment very easily take a clock wall clock or anything bring it in front of the mirror always you see your face inside the mirror now for the first time you see something else inside the mirror so it is laterally reversed for that reason see uh, how will be the uh, name of the ambulance written in the uh, ambulance it will be written in the reverse order laterally reversed because if ambulance is coming from uh, your radar side back side and uh, when you look through the mirror the reversed uh, uh, the reversed image is formed suppose ambulance itself is written in letters in the ambulance in the reversed order whatever you see in the mirror is uh, the correct position of that so again reversed so you will see the correct position now you can't uh, read this but when i hold it in front of the mirror you can read it since laterally reversed image is formed in the mirrors of course there we use convex mirror you can see the image in the mirror can you see that ambulance now at the correct reading so actually it is reversed here right I will check I will set it right yes you can see that right yes so here it is reversed so it is always reversed uh, return because we have to give uh, way to the ambulance and uh, ambulances uh, uh, will be always giving service to the people who are uh, in need of uh, immediate treatment so we have to give them give them the path so you can immediately notice it and you can allow it so in a plane mirror so we have the image which is of the same size as the object laterally reversed image but erect it is not inverted virtual at the same distance as the object inside the mirror okay now now we will enter into the actual syllabus we have curved mirrors the outside part of a spoon inside part of a spoon the vehicle mirror that we use for observing the rarer, rarer objects all these are curved mirrors how does reflection occur in curved mirror sir does all these uh, um, does the reflection uh, laws are followed in uh, even in uh, other uh, mirrors yes it is followed everywhere wherever there is reflection this is followed angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection and uh, incident ray reflected ray and normal all lie in the same plane you have observed when i put the uh, laser beam into that laser beam was going along with that sheet and it was reflecting along with that sheet and everything and normal was also on the sheet it doesn't went into the different direction so if this is the sheet when light enters like this gets reflected normal is also on the, uh, on the palm so they all lie in the same plane incident ray reflected ray and normal all lie in the same plane sir if I want to draw uh, some rays of light in a curved mirror what I have to do now first of all we will see how many types of curved mirror we are going to study we will study different types of curved mirror mainly two types we are going to study one is concave mirror another is convex mirror now here you know that if you incident a ray of light normally angle of incidence is zero because it is along the normal itself angle is measured with respect to the normal if you incident a ray of light normally it gets reflected back along the normal again but in the opposite direction i is zero r is zero if it is incident at some angle it reflects back at the same angle with respect to the normal okay coming to the curved mirror now suppose you have a concave mirror i'll take a concave mirror what is a concave mirror it's a part of a sphere suppose if i have a glass sphere imagine an uh, apple uh, apple like this or an orange like this 
cut one part of the orange or this is a cricket ball rubber ball say tennis ball that's the best choice take a tennis ball cut it from one end will you get a bowl like arrangement like this you will get a bowl like arrangement now if you put a ray of light inside this and if it gets reflected then this is concave mirror concave inside you can go inside it, inside it so if it is reflecting from the inside part then it is a concave mirror it is a curved mirror now so it, this is a part of a sphere now suppose you could complete this you will get a sphere and it will have a center and this is the center of the sphere even though we are having in our hands we are having all the part of a concave mirror uh, sorry part of a sphere that concave mirror is a part of a full sphere and the center of that sphere is the center of curvature for this and this is c and this is the radius so every curved mirror will have a radius every spoon if it is completed it will form a globe like arrangement right imaginary globe and it will have a center it is the center of curvature and it will have a radius but in a two dimensional board we represent it only like this we don't take it as a bowl or uh, something else we represent only like this but you have to imagine that it is like this little like this okay so now if you take a concave mirror which reflects light from inside part and which is silvered from the outside part silvered means it is painted painted from the other side you can't make a ray of light uh, to re get reflected from here because it is painted and uh, it absorbs the light okay this is a part of a sphere and it will have a center so now in order to see how, how what arrangements we have made while a ray of light is incident on a plane mirror angle of incidence angle of reflection normal and so and so here also we have to have some uh, parts related to a mirror now the total available area for reflection in a mirror is called aperture geometrical uh, area is called aperture and the midpoint of this geometrical surface is called pole suppose you have a mirror i can show you a mirror here concave mirror will be like this of course you can't see the concave part of this you can't see the concave part of this right so this is a concave mirror it's very uh, it, it's a part of a very large sphere so if you have a very big football and take a small chop out small part of it you can't you feel that it is almost a plane but it's not plane it is a part of a very large sphere so this is a concave mirror it is reflecting from inside uh, when we were kids we used to play with this we can form the image of this i will show how the image is formed one minute you can get the image of the outside objects using this concave mirror see you can see the image you will see what type of image is formed and uh, how it is uh, recognized can you see the image here formed due to concave mirror right is outside building that you can see but inverted right so we used to play with this concave mirror uh, we used to bring this concave mirror from uh, exhibitions or uh, uh, some festivals shops and we used to get the image you can see the image now okay i will try to get a uh, better image yeah but today the light available is very less it is a cloudy weather so we don't get a very good image if it is a sunny day you can get a good image yeah this is the best possible image i think yes you can see the inverted image of the building right yes now so this is a concave mirror okay so it reflects from the inside part so when uh, that concave mirror is available uh, you must define so many things related to the mirror for example uh, suppose uh, if i am holding an object in front of it i want to know at what distance this object is in front of the mirror so from where we will calculate suppose uh, object is kept here from where we will calculate the distance shall we calculate it from here or here or here or here we should have a reference point on the mirror that is called pole the center of the geometry geometrical area of the mirror is called pole pole is a center of the total air area available for reflection 
geometric center of the mirror is called pole and uh, concave mirror is a part of a sphere and the center of the sphere is center and distance from center to pole let me write a neat guide diagram this is the concave mirror which is painted outside and it's reflecting from the inside part geometric center is called pole and uh, this is the center of that imaginary sphere of which this is a part and distance from the center to the pole is called radius of curvature radius of a spherical mirror is the distance from the center to the pole and now let us try to put different rays of light onto the uh, curved mirror as if we did it in a plane mirror we will put one by one ray of light now in concave mirror there is a very special ray suppose you hold the concave mirror in front of the sun or a distant object what i did now parallel rays will come to the concave mirror and they will fall and they will get focused at a particular point so if parallel rays are incident on a concave mirror let me use different color chalk these are the rays now if parallel parallel rays are incident on a concave mirror and uh, uh, they should be par uh, parallel and very close to this uh, axis after reflection they pass through a point and that point is called focus this is called focus so and here we define one more thing see the distance from center to pole is called radius what is this line which is joining the center and pole and it can be called an axis it can be of any length you extend it from either sides don't stop it from center to pole extend it throughout a line joining the center and the pole is called principal axis so this is principal axis because we should have all these things in order to identify the object where the where is the object whether it is on the principal axis whether it is above the principal axis or below the principal axis at what distance it is measure it from the pole and all these things for all references we should have all these things right so if you are asked to define what is a pole it is the geometric center of the mirror what is uh, principal axis it is a line joining the center and the pole what is radius it is a distance from center and pole it is not the line it is the distance from the center and center to the pole of the mirror and what is focus if parallel rays are incident on a concave mirror after reflection they meet at a point and that point is called focus and remember these parallel rays must be very close to the principal axis and we call it as paraxial rays Paraxial rays means rays which are parallel to the principal axis and close to the principal axis. All of them meet at the same point and that point is called focus. And every mirror is characterized by focal length. What do you mean by focal length? Focal length is the distance from the focus to the mirror, pole. Distance from the focus to the pole is called focal length. And remember, when you represent all these distances and points we should follow always some notations focus capital f focal length small f length for length small f for point capital f so focal length is the distance from focus to the pole and focus is the point where parallel rays paraxial rays meet after reflection from the mirror so and suppose sir uh, if you put in a reverse way reverse way in, in the sense I will take a concave mirror. I will mark its pole. I will mark its focus. I will mark its center. Sir, any ray of light incident parallel to the principal axis will pass through focus. Okay, if I take a laser beam and put parallel to the principal axis, this line, then it passes through the focus after reflection. Now, if I put the reverse way, if I put a ray of light through the focus, will it come back like this? Exactly. Because a ray of light always follows the principle of reversibility. What do you mean by principle of reversibility? If a ray of light is traveling in different directions like this, through different media, at the end, if you reflect the ray of light back in the opposite direction, it will follow the same reverse path. It will follow the reverse path always. So, if a ray of light is made to fall through the focus, okay, this is the focus, I will adjust a little bit. If a ray of light is made to pass through the focus after reflection, it becomes parallel to the principal axis. 
So these are all the very definite rays of light which we are acquainted with. We very well know that these rays behave in the same way and these are needed to trace the image. All those rays which, which behave in the same way and exactly like this, they are very familiar to us and they help us to track the image. So any ray of light parallel to the principal axis passes through a common point. All the, rays, uh, all the paraxial rays pass through the common point and that common point is called focus. Any ray of light passing through the focus becomes parallel after reflection. So this is principle of reversibility. Suppose you make the ray of light again, you hold a small uh, plane mirror and make it to return back, of course, but due to principle of reversibility it returns back. Of course it knows what to do. Right. Now, sir, in a plane mirror, you said when a ray of light is incident like this, it returns back in the same path. Angle of incidence is zero, angle of reflection is also zero. You can do that experiment, take a small ball, drop the ball on the uh, floor, it moves to the floor vertically like this and rebounds back in the same path but in the opposite direction. Angle of I is equal to zero, R is equal to zero. So now how to do this here? Imagine that in your school suppose there is a cylinder in which water will be poured, cylindrical uh, steel vessel. I'll give you a laser beam. You have put the laser beam on the cylindrical vessel. Suppose this is the surface of the cylindrical vessel. You have to put a laser beam on the cylindrical vessel so that it returns back. It should be normal incidence. Normal incidence in a plane mirror is easy. But what about normal incidence here? How to go for it? Which is normal for a um, curved surface? It's very easy. Suppose you have a circle. Imagine this is a circle or need not imagine it's a circle. It's a beautiful circle now. How to draw a perpendicular line to this surface? I want to draw a perpendicular line. Sir, is this perpendicular to this surface? Sir, whether this is perpendicular? This is perpendicular to this surface? Sir, I will use one more color chalk. Yes. Sir, is this perpendicular to this surface? Which is perpendicular, sir? Any line which is directed towards the center will be always perpendicular to that curvature. For this curvature, this line is perpendicular, of course. It should be directed towards the center like this. So if this is center, any line which is directed towards the center will be perpendicular to the surface. So the perpendicular line here is neither this yellow nor this uh, uh, orange or so, it is a green line. This line is perpendicular to the surface. Sir, how to draw a perpendicular here on this surface at this point? It's very simple. You be ready with your dotted line towards the center. Extend it. This is normal to this surface. Sir, how, should, how, how, how will I draw a normal here? Join this point. Draw this line. This is normal to this surface. So any line moving towards the center will be normal. So if you want to uh, put a uh, laser beam normal to the cylinder and get, uh, uh, wish, uh, you wish to get it back like this in the same uh, uh, angle of incidence and reflection zero, in that cylindrical vessel there will be an axis. So put a ray of light towards the axis. Of course it doesn't enter but towards the axis, in the direction of axis. That means towards the center, center of the cylinder. So let the ray of light, suppose if I look the same, look into the cylinder from the top, how it will look like? Suppose this is the top of the cylinder, this will be the center. So put a laser beam onto the cylinder like this, so that it moves towards the center, then it gets reflected back. This is I equal to zero, R equal to zero. So for a plane mirror, plane surface, very easy at 90 degrees. But angle of incidence is zero because it is with respect to normal, along the normal itself, it gets reflected back. For a curved surface, let your ray be in, in, in a direction that it is directed towards the center. So any ray directed towards the center will be normal. So uh, now suppose if I use that uh, idea here, sir, if a ray passing through the focus is incident, it becomes parallel. Okay. Any ray parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus, okay? Now, I want a ray of light which should go and return back. 
how should I incident? You select the ray of light which passes through the center or need not exactly pass through the center, directed towards the center. Now I want a ray of light to be incident here which will reflect back in the same path. So join this using dotted lines like this. Now incident ray of light like this, it reflects back like this. This is normal incidence. So this is a normal ray to this surface. Because if you complete this curvature, this will be the center. And if you take a select area of light like this, it is along the center, it gets reflected back and it passes to the center. So you must be aware of all these rays of light, uh, which is uh, incident or parallel to the principal axis passing through the focus, any ray passing through the focus becoming parallel, area of light along the center getting reflected back in the same path but in the opposite direction, I equals zero, R equals zero. And one more thing you can see here, uh, suppose if I take a concave mirror like this and every time when I draw the diagram, please observe one thing. I take the ray diagrams with the ray of light traveling from left side to right side along the x-axis. This helps you a lot to analyze all the sign conventions. So follow this uh, method every time, right? Let the mirror, let the lenses be placed in such a way that ray of light from the object travel along the positive x-axis. You know positive x-axis like this, plus x-axis. So let me take a mirror and let me take a ray of light uh, which is incident towards the pole like this. Like this. Okay. Let me incident it like this. Now, sir, can you define angle of incidence and angle of reflection here? Definitely. How? Very easy angle between the incident ray and the normal. You see how do you, uh, for example here, this is normal and this is the incident ray, say this gets reflected like this, this is the angle of incidence, this is the angle of reflection. How do you draw the normal, uh, sorry, normal drawn at the point of incidence to the surface. Now, this itself is a normal to the surface. How do you say that this is normal? If you complete this uh, sphere, here is the center, this is a line passing through the center. This should be normal to the surface. There is no doubt. Because this is a line along the center. So this itself is a normal. This is the angle of incidence. And that ray of light gets reflected like this. And this should be the angle of reflection. So this should be the angle of reflection. Right. So any ray of light incident on the pole along the... Uh, sorry, uh, with an angle to the normal gets reflected back in the uh, uh, angle of reflection R and here also I is equal to R, angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection and that is definitely true. So this is about concave mirror and in the same way we have to discuss it about convex mirror and then we will have to see how the images are formed and what is the relation between this radius and the focal length and everything one by one derivation. So these are the basic things. Shall we discuss about convex mirror a little bit? A ray of light incident on the convex mirror and uh, uh, do we have time? Okay, we will discuss about convex mirror later. Thank you.